Assalamu alaikum and welcome back to another conversation on the After Maghrib podcast. As always, I've been told I take too long with my intros, so I'm going to go straight into today's discussion. <laughs> Ahmed, assalamu alaikum. <laughs> Excellent. So what's happening? Alhamdulillah. Much better. I like that. I like that. I like that. Like you know, usually, <laughs> why don't you tell people what your intros are like? Okay. Pre pre recording. Takes about a few moments for me to calibrate my mind. Few moments. I go and pray my maghrib isha. I come back. He's still doing. I'm, I just, ju- <laughs> I'm joking. I show up on time. If, if we're gonna go there. <laughs> Today I'm going before you say. I'm joking. I'm joking. Habib, how you doing? What's well, happening? Alhamdulillah. I'm good. What's going on? I'm better now that I'm sitting beside someone who I really love. Thank you. And I'm going to introduce him straight away. <laughs> I won't even have any delay. But my, my amazing, how can I say, my Ibn sure. Ammi, we share, inshallah, a bloodline. Sure. And inshallah, we've shared so much memories together. For, uh, Hasib, for, uh, Rizvi, salam alaikum. Salam alaikum. Salam alaikum. Salam. How you doing, man? Alhamdulillah, man. It's good to be back in the UK. Good to have you back in the ends, man. Yeah, man. How's it's, it feel? Uh, yeah, it's been an interesting journey. Um, so obviously, listeners not listening, like, they might obviously don't know where I've been, <laughs> right. but yeah. I moved to California, uh, so I'm back now. Um, well, just for a few days, inshallah, visiting. Um, it's been good, man. The last few weeks, just connecting with a lot of the brothers, uh, both in Arba'in over here. Yeah. Um, just been nice. Alhamdulillah. You, Alhamdulillah. So you've we kind of been like on like a, a spiritual cleanse trip journey. Yeah. Yeah. I guess what you were you doing? Because you went obviously you're here now, which undoes all the cleansing. Yeah. yeah no. <laughs> but what were you doing pre Arba'in? Because I saw some beautiful posts. Uh, so pre Arba'in, alhamdulillah, went to uh, Hawaii. Nice. Uh, which was like subhanallah, just like like paradise. Yeah. Mm. It's, it's crazy. Like the trees and just the ocean. So it's it, just like, it is as they say it is. Yeah, 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 for sure. But not all islands in Hawaii are equal. Like okay. there's some that are like more developed. Mm. And then the one that we went to is called Kauai. Like it's the least developed. So like eighty percent of it is still just like Real. natural. It's natural. Yeah, it's just mm. natural. It's, it's uh quite stunning. Heavy What's life like it? in California versus London? Life in California versus London is basically like the people and the culture is just chill. Yeah. Right. Um, the weather's good. Obviously that plays a big role in everyone's like mood. Um, because it's relatively a still very new place, right? Like mm. it's in like, probably like only like 500 years old. If that, I don't think it's even that old. Mm. Everything's been designed for like convenience, you know? So just like little things. Like never having to worry about a parking ticket. So I'm the two two years no parking ticket so no far. Way. Longest streak of my life. I'm, I've um, probably gone like two weeks. So and then again, then come back to London. That's the first thing I realized. I was like, yeah, driving is like stressful over here, you know. Yeah. Like compared to California, it's just like it's just chill. Um. So now th- th- that's some of the differences. But obviously, halal food scene in London is is like that's top tier. That's like yeah. And I hope people in London recognize what we have. Like it's it's good here. Like the food is good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Whoever, whoever comes from abroad to the UK, the first thing they want to try is the restaurants. Yeah, it's not halal. Especially Sorry. if they're coming from like North America and places. Bro, you yeah. don't even need to think about it. Mm. You t- bro, chicken oh. and pepe is and literally every road. I was gonna say every road you got five, ten yeah. chicken shops. Yeah, yeah. literally. That is, it's because about over there, the, especially in Ca- Southern California, like the halal food offerings are dire. Like as in, it's just like what people celebrate there. Like it makes me upset. Like, like, yeah. like I'm obviously... I've seen your struggle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. so like I, you know, like on Instagram, I've, I've shared yeah, that. Yeah, People think yeah, I'm yeah. just joking. I'm like, no, it actually upsets me that there's yeah, no decent fried this chicken. Is, this is what you we're know? used to. This is like this is it. You know, this is and our then, culture. And then, then you realize that okay, London fried chicken is basically its own like genre. Like as in, that's not like how Americans make fried chicken. Obviously, fried chicken comes from America, mm. but the way the uncles basically make it in the shops, they've like mixed it up completely. They've brought yeah. their culture. Yeah, exactly. They've they thrown some of the Indian spices in there. Mm. So it's, it's a different, it's a different ball game. Um, but Alhamdulillah, yeah, yeah. it's been nice to come back, you know? And, uh, yeah, it's no, it's back. good to have you back, man. For those who don't know, Hasib, of course, is, um, as I said, said, he's one he's of our G. own yeah <laughs> the goal the goal of graphics <laughs> the graphic goat wow i've got competition now um yeah uh, <laughs> that top g killed me because he's got the andrew andrew tate oh, hair please. Oh, we're not going there anyway we're not going there anyway um hasib for those who don't know um joined ahlul bait tv what like 2010 
2009, 2010. From establishment, uh, minus right? six months from it launching. Yeah. Really, yeah? Yeah, yeah. Subhanallah. So obviously, from here, from from day one, co-founder of the Muslim Vibe was the one who co-founder of Who's Hussein bought the the domain Who's Hussein dot org. Um, was instrumental, I'd say, in some of the biggest and most groundbreaking campaigns in the western shia world so we owe a lot i think as a community to hasib um and now of course the muslim family hub which is one of uh hasib's other brainchilds and mashallah is thriving so i think i kind of want to start because i know today we're going to talk about for those obviously i know we haven't even introduced the topic but we want to talk about establishing uh our identity as western shia uh muslims generally mm. which i think is so instrumental to a podcast like after maghrib yeah. because we we pride ourselves on being like you said a very unique genre yeah. of muslim people um in the sense that we are born and bred western mm. but we come from varying backgrounds culturally mm. and ethnically um but of course we we share something in common which is values and religion but to kind of kick off here i think maybe a good place to start is you on your on your kind kind of own personal journey last 15 yeah. odd years why have you spent the majority of your life doing work for the community um so i'll rephrase that a little bit it's not for the community it's for the debate right Excellent. um and i think sometimes we, sh we should make that verbal distinction because we say sometimes community community but it's like that's looking inward priorities yeah. and i'm not trying to say it in a holier than that way like genuinely like i was just mentioning this to a brother earlier today like it's a very simple uh moment on ziara when i was 15 years old and the classic kind of question to the maulana like Please give your advice for the youth right yeah, yeah um but he gave a very like just like simple but like hard-hitting answer and uh, i don't even know the guy's name but he changed my life um he simply said whatever you're good at apply that to serve allah and the hill mm. and at the time i was good at art right like i was good at drawing and painting and stuff like that but i was like how can i can like i don't know how i can like logically make that effective for the cause of allah and the bait um and so then kind of just like found myself uh being intrigued by design um and then that ziarat itself just connected me with brothers that were like way older than me some of them were pioneers of this tv channel um and you know the opportunity just came about like you know hey listen we want to do like first it was a dvd documentary called karbala and skies of blood, blood yeah. um that, yeah. and at that time i had experimented with just like basic graphics and stuff like that i was doing digital art islamic art sharing it online and stuff um, this was back in the Shia chat days. Um, and then uh, it was like a documentary. And with no experience of motion graphics or editing, I'm like, yeah, down. I'm like, whatever, like, let's do it. Bismillah. Um, and, and that was a phenomenal experience, like yeah. getting to see all of that growing with, the, with those guys. And I was like really lucky. I was like a 16 year old kid. And I had friends that were like 22, 25 years old, right? Mm. So I got like this late pass from my mom because she knew I was safe. Um, and all my other friends were like, well, he's just like chilling in central London and stuff like that. Yeah. Day. And I was like, it was just nice because I had that brotherhood um, and, and those connections. Like literally Amir Taki was like, you know, like an older mentor for me. Um, him, Sayyid Amir. All of us. Yeah, um, like some of those guys are just like, they're, they're, those are the, 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 the goats, right? Like those yeah. are the real Gs, you know? Um, and then, yeah, then just like one opportunity led to another, you know, like I said, documentary. And then after that, the TV channel opened um exhausted myself at the tv channel alhamdulillah putting so much uh passion and, and not, not just me on my own but like collectively as a young team like we go back to, to those days you know what i mean like we were so young then like yes. i think you sent a picture the other day yeah of us like 10 years ago and like we grinded at the at this channel alhamdulillah, yeah. alhamdulillah. working at 3 a.m 5 a.m god knows how many hours just getting it done you know we had a good uh, amount of fried chicken as well yeah yeah <laughs> you know, like kfc went halal that was a that was a yeah, game changing yeah, moment game changer, yeah yeah so alhamdulillah um you know like i said the opportunities came um i just basically grabbed them and one thing led to another and and, and that's basically mm -hmm. it yeah a little bit tv well some great memories yeah great memories yeah but you know you know you being young at 16, you know, you said that moment that Ziara hit you, mm. and you're going to apply what you're good at and serve Allah and the Ahlul Bayt. Alhamdulillah, you have, and you still do. I, you mentioned a point yeah. where you said, I was good. I think you are still good. Yeah. Let me just make, make yeah. sure I say that. Yeah. Um, but what I want to know, Hasib, is that let's say now you left Ahlul Bayt, you're mm. no longer working with the channel, mm. but you still continue in that field, I can say in a way. Yeah. Has the culture changed of how it was when you were 16 to where you are now? That's, that's a that's a great question um i think a lot has changed since then uh primarily like 
you know, I was, I was really thinking about this earlier, and this might sound like crazy vain, right? But I'm just mm-hmm. going to throw it out there. Like back in the day, like for me to design something that went viral was relatively easy. Yeah. Right. I'll design something. I'll rack it on Shia chat. I'll rack it on CYC forums. Yeah. Right. Uh, probably post it on Facebook and DeviantArt, of course. And then the next year, you'd basically see everyone's like display Even pictures for Muharram yeah, yeah. would be like something that I designed. I thought that was pretty nice, right? Now, like that doesn't really happen. And it's just basically, I feel like what's changed is social media has basically exposed us to so much content, mm. right? And and honestly, like quality content as well. Like there's some crazy, like martial art talented uh, artists and designers in the, in the Shia community and Muslim community at large. Um, but nothing sticks anymore, right? Yeah, N- nothing. Lasts I mean, you past- can have AI and mid journey and stuff, and that's doing yeah abstract mm. non human concepts, and yeah, it will get lost in. Tr- and that's it. You're just you're just scrolling through. You're it, scrolling through it, and that's it, right? But this is this is what I was gonna say. Like attention spans generally, I think the core of it is our attention. Yeah, like our attention spans have changed big time, and that's affected yeah us virtually online and whatnot. But even in yeah. majalis or with our parents or our friends, our attention to detail has like maybe you could argue dropped a lot yeah and maybe that means that the demand from creators is higher and the demand for from uh like community organizers and yeah. leaders is higher to yeah. do more and with that said like good work still stands out yeah right so like what hassan ruhal amin has been able to do for the yeah, shia yeah, culture yeah. through his paintings over the last few years that's that's second that's, to none that just yeah. speaks for itself right like mm-hmm. as you can tell the heart in that work right yeah and and honestly, I think that's like the biggest thing when there's heart in the work. Uh, and I mean like actual tears, like, you know, like being connected to it on that level, then it reaches the heart, right? Mm-hmm. But if it's just something done for the sake of, hey, I've got to post content and stuff like that, then it's not going to stay. That's very true. Uh, but nowadays, like, you know, because of the, the cycle of the algorithm is like, hey man, you got to post five times a day. Like, you know, yeah, like yeah. It's, it's like this whole like cult that's of crazy, like man. social media, right? Yeah. So what, what really sticks, what's really going to stand out? No one's going to remember anything, right? Mm. So I think that's kind of like changed in the, in the wider culture. Um, in terms of like the, the Shia Muslim culture since then, like... Man, I've just I've just seen nothing but development. I've just seen like the most amazing progress um, coming from us. You know, uh, 2012 is when Who's the Saying launched, right? Mm. Um, I think that was a cultural shift moment. Hundred um, percent. In the sense 100%. that we took Imam Hussein out of the, the community, but the, the wall. Yeah, the four walls, yeah. right, of the Husseinia, right? Which was the purpose, right? It's like, look, we're, we are talking about Imam Hussein. We already know about Imam Hussein. The world needs to know about Imam Hussein, right? So taking him out of, of our walls, right? And then sharing his message with the world. And then later on, like the Husseini spirit itself and the volunteers around the world, taking that and saying, hey, actually the best way for us to reflect Imam Hussein is to do acts of service for other people and people in need. Um, and that for me was like witnessing that. I was just like yeah. mesmerized by it. You know, I was, I was speaking to someone yesterday. I was talking about, in, in my humble opinion, I think every major campaign which has had success, at least in our like the Western Shia world, has had um something to launch it into success mm. so if you're talking about tv channels yeah whether it's ahl bayt tv imam hussein tv safir tv all of the amazing channels they've all had a campaign or a show or a something which has launched them into the public eye if you're talking about who is hussein you had the billboards in 2012 mm. the blood campaign which was a year or two years last year actually and there's so many other things you can think of um and generally speaking, I think that a big part of that comes back to understanding culture. I know we're going to use this word a lot. Yeah. All right. Now, I think it's important for us to understand, like, we are like such a unique breed of human mm. because we're a mesh of varying cultures, linguistically and ethnically and whatnot. So, but now we live in a world where, you know, we're, we're such a hybrid, like diaspora, like, uh, mix of people and but somehow we connect and like i said earlier we share something in common yeah you mentioned to me on the phone yesterday like our parents established and they brought our homeland culture to us in our childhood and now we're at a turning point and some of us alhamdulillah three of us are parents we're passing that on but we're kind of passing on a bit of a like like a changed image of what we were taught Mm. because we're obviously mixing that with the ingredients of our own culture Mm. um how important firstly how do we define what culture is because that's a big word yeah. it's a conflated word and secondly is it important to grasp your understanding what your culture is and then carrying it forward because i'm just going to carry on for a second but if someone asks me what's my culture 
as I always say, I go through like identity crisis all the time yeah. because I have I don't really understand what my my homeland is. Yeah, my mother tongue. I'm not as as fluent as I should be, mm. and um, my 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 wife and my immediate family and my kids are all varying ethnic and mm. linguistic backgrounds. So for me, culture is like a huge thing. What is it, and how much of it is there? Yeah. So understanding it, I think, is a really difficult thing for a lot of people, and even yeah. if they know what their culture is, sometimes they don't know what it is. If you know yeah. what I mean. No, I agree. I feel like culture as a word has got a very bad rap from us as Muslims. Yeah. Um, especially like, you know, generationally, we saw like after 9-11, like a lot of Muslims became more practicing of Islam because they were basically on the back foot and they had to, right? And so with that, or at least within like, you know, the Pakistani Muslim community, what tends to happen is that all forms of culture get thrown to the wall, right? And you're like, okay, this is not Islam, this is culture. This is not Islam, this is culture. This is not Islam, this mm. is culture, right? And then, like, culture just seems like this, like, bad word, right? Like, is in anyone who engages in culture is engaging in anything other than faith. Yeah. But that's a misunderstanding of culture because culture exists no matter what. Right. Right? Culture is what me and you are wearing. It's the language that we're using to talk to each other. It's our haircuts. It's the what we watch at home. It's what we listen to on the, in, in the car, right? It's the car that we drive. That's what culture is. It forms everything, right? So you can't really control or suppress culture, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's cult elements of culture, of course, that go against Sharia, right? Mm. But the problem is, is because we don't like to use the term culture within a religious context, we're not being able to maximize its potential. Now, I'll give you an example. Opening your fast is wajib in Ramadan, Yeah. right? Culture dictates, however, whether it's going to be a samosa, or that lentil soup that you have. Yeah. Shorba. 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 Right. Shorba right? <laughs> so, uh, like, religion says, right, mourn for Imam Hussein, right? Culture says, we're going to wear black. You, yeah. Right? But in other cultures, they wear white. Yeah. For mourning. India. Yeah. Right? It's only up until even, the, even only last time. Even Dawoodi Bora Shias yeah. wear white on our Shura. Yeah. It's, it's all yeah, common. So, white, culturally, in India, is the color of mourning. Yeah. Unless you're doing tatwir. So, so that's, 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 the, <laughs> that's, that's basically culture, yeah. right? And so having that distinction allows you then to realize, oh, okay, like as long as I'm doing my religious obligations, the cultural part of it is technically, and, and like, allow me to express this without being misunderstood, like we can have a little bit of fun with that. Do you get what I mean? We can kind of experiment Manipulate. with that, right? How would you experiment with that? Instead of shorba, like we can have, open it with fruit salad, for example, mm. right? You're a white reaver. Why are you eating a samosa for your iftar? For example, mm, mm, does enough. that person not have the right to maintain their culture, right? Mm. And mm. their culture might be, I don't know, roast chicken, white fish. people eat lettuce and stuff, right? <laughs> so, um, yeah. shout, shout out white people. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and the only lettuce for... for, yeah. for, for I don't that. know, whenever you see films, they're eating lettuce, right? Yeah. <laughs> so, like, you know, like things like that, you know? And, and so, but the problem is, is that because we haven't properly understood and defined culture, people then also make their culture their religion. And we've seen that happen as well, yeah. right? When people take their culture, because it's enmeshed with the religion, they take the cultural part as religious and as obligatory as the religious act itself, yeah. right? So they'll give you a weird look if you do certain things in Muharram because they like, no, we don't do it in Muharram, right? Mm. But it's just like, yo, like if we understand like this separation distinction, it allows us to experiment with it, allows us to work on it, right? Mm. And ultimately, like culture is a tool in which we can uh, change hearts, right? And that's how culture is being used against us right now, right? We have no choice but to consume the culture around us, yeah, right? Unless you literally put your, bury your head in the sound, in the sand, we don't have a choice but to absorb culture. Culture is going to be the advertising campaign. Let's say you're not even watching TV; you're still driving past a billboard, right? Culture dictates what that billboard might have on it, mm. yeah. So little little details like that, but we're not basically present when it comes to the cultural kind of battlefield as such. We just consume. We're not really creating, and and this era is like because of social media and where we are now, like this really is an era of content. Yeah. Right? Like how good your content is can actually have an impact on people's opinions of something. Um. So yeah, I think that should hopefully inshallah answer the question mm. of like what is culture. I have a lot of questions, but I'm gonna ask. I had to say it. You know what I'm thinking of? You, you you mentioned the part where you you said it's culture, like it dictates yeah. what we consume. Yeah, isn't that society? No, or have I confused it myself? No, see, it's, it's an interesting point because basically society builds yeah. the culture. 
Yeah. Right? Okay. But society is what? It's a collection of human beings. It's a collection of cultures as well. Yeah. If you imagine it. But generally, you might have a societal culture. Yeah. So a societal norm in the UK is to wear a shirt and tie and a suit when you go for a job interview. Yeah. yeah. But in other cultures, you're wearing a robe or whatever it might be. Yeah. Something completely different. I think that's very interesting. And I think that maybe as a Muslim community, there needs to be uh, like kind of uh, game changing individuals who can advance us as Shia culture culture creators, not just content yeah. creators, but yeah. culture creators. Yeah. Like I, I like that concept, and I think you you've definitely been one of them. And for those who have followed your work, like you have a consistency when it comes to aesthetics, mm. your branding, your colors, your fonts. Like it's a very niche thing that. Like when you see something, you're like I know how she made this. Like do you know what I mean? There's a minimalistic vibe that you have and a neon that. vibe. For those who don't know what you're talking about, how can they see your work? Just just before you continue. Oh, that's weird. Now you tell them my Instagram page, <laughs> <laughs> which, which is. I'll put it up on the uh, on the screen. Somewhere. Dot Rizvi. RZV, yeah. So, like, I completely. I think that's a really good point. Yeah, a lot of the times maybe we and me especially might be victim to a very low level conversation of culture versus religion mm. how often do you hear that phrase culture versus religion yeah. majalis culture versus religion absoc events culture versus religion and like you said it becomes a war on culture yeah. and i think the manipulation of culture if we use it in the right way yeah. can advance and accelerate our understanding of religion yeah. or it can deter and hinder it i mean i'll give you an example of what's culture right culture is millions of husseinis feeling the uh, the spiritual and kind of like human pain and love for Imam Hussein. Yeah. Right? And then they culturally expressed it so organically that now there's 22 million of them gathering every year. Yeah. Right? That's cultural. Right? Yes, there is hadith that say, go visit Imam Hussein on Ziyarat. Right? They may, I don't think there is any hadith that says go from Najaf to Karbala. Right? Well, I had something, but anyway, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, right. We're, yeah. Not, we're not getting different, into that, different right? conversation, yeah. But say, for example, even if there is a hadith, right? Well, like, who said this? You should have chai, right? Right, exactly. The, the manner I mean? in which right? you do it, and exactly. So these Nobody little things. To open a mall kid. Yeah, exactly. Like yeah. this year, yeah. So like this year, for example, I saw little girls, right? They they give perfume on you, yeah. right? That's a cultural act. Do you get what I mean? Yeah. Yes, it's rooted in in a religious cause, right? And a religious meaning, but it's a cultural act, right? And so what I'm saying is, is that culture allows room, right, for these kind of things to exist, which are not haram, right? You can't say, oh, that's haram. Like, why is there people giving out perfumes to each other? You can't say it's haram. You can't say it's a bidah either, because it's not really like, you know, like... Can't be a bidah. Yeah, because it is... It, it, unless you have this rigid understanding that of everything only the Prophet did and everything else is haram. Yeah, yeah. By the... You're riding a camel, for example, that kind of argument. Um, so, so yeah, I, I see all of that. Now, for example, Latmiya and Nohez, right? We're seeing them change, right? We're seeing them change. Now, for example, like 20 years ago, using sound effects in the back, right? That wouldn't be considered was okay. It, was a no right? Culturally, yeah. yeah. yeah but culturally, cultural norm, for example, would have been something else. And now, yeah, everyone's got like a, a slight mm -hmm. instrumental in the back, right? And we're okay with it. Culturally, we've evolved, right? And as a diary from Mama Sain has always evolved culturally, yeah. right? And so... Like what? The, the, I guess the thing is, is that you can't really like force culture either. You can't really like, quote unquote, shape it. There's no like organization that can be created that can be said, oh, we're gonna guide culture to be this, right? Because yeah. it's not organic. Culture is always organic. Um, and so what resonates with people is gonna stick. What doesn't resonate with people will fall off, right? As long as we're not going outside the bounds of Sharia, we're fine. Mm. Mm. So, I don't know. I'm thinking of. Um culture may be ruining Islam mm. sometimes in a sense. What I mean by that is, you know, you may have some certain cultural practices that go against Islam completely. Yeah. Uh, uh, so as, as you said, I don't want to say this is bid'ah or something. I don't, mm -hmm. don't want to enter those waters because they can be very gray and muddy. But I think sometimes culture can really ruin your faith where you can believe in culture more than you believe in Tawheed, more than you believe in the teachings of Rasulullah. Sometimes... Uh, they will they they will not do a religious act. So I don't mm. want to mention examples because they believe this culture is either wajib or haram, and it and it's more superior than what's expected from you as a Muslim. So I don't know. I'm, I'm not going to say I'm yeah. pro culture. I know what you mean. I know. What you mean. I get what you but mean. it's not it's not black and white. Like yeah. it's not pro or anti. Yeah, 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 it's yeah. like it's cultural acts will be beneficial yeah. or may not. So be. culture is beautiful. Yeah, I think as long as it's not you know murking in no for example said like if you imagine yeah in south asian culture yeah yeah for hundreds of years even mm. like pre-islam entering 
well in terms of in on mass yeah okay like wearing a dupatta or wearing like a light hair covering is cultural so whether you're Hindu or Sikh or Muslim, you still you're going to be covering an element of your hair, whether okay. it's as an adornment or as a modesty kind of technique. Like in the time of Rasulullah. Right, yeah. yeah. Exactly, pre-Islamic Arabia, mm -hmm. yeah. So, like, that's cultural. Mm -hmm. And then you can transform that cultural practice into hijab, and it's an easy transition because it's already existing. And that's great because your culture is facilitating that. Or it can be on the flip side, where people then view the new practice of religious practice once Islam's entered, and then reverts back to the cultural practice of, so, oh, yeah, yeah, I'll just cover my hair halfway i don't want to make any judgments but i'm saying like you can go either way with that another example if you're talking about um like music and instruments kawali yeah kawali is those who know drums and the flutes and all of that and you're doing dhikr of imam ali or whatever it might be now culturally that might be accepted religiously or whatever there might be question marks over it you could apply this argument to various things but there are things which are also behaviorally accepted culturally like for example you know, in, 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 again, I'm going to bring up South Asian culture, but as Indians and Pakistanis, like whether or not you're Muslim, mm -hmm. the respect you give to your elders, the martaba we say in it, like as in the, the maqam that an elder has is wajib. So whether you're Muslim or Sikh or Hindu or whatever, Jain. And that's in line with Islamic values. Exactly. So it's fine. We so your that grandmother, your yeah. grandfather, you stand up if they're in, they walk into the room. If, you know, they have like the, the main seat at the dinner table. in front of them, et cetera, right. et cetera, et cetera. So culturally, that's great. Mm. You know, and it doesn't clash with anything. It facilitates us Islamically. So it's, it's like there are murky waters, you're right. And I think there are things which are like definitely pro or anti Sharia, but obviously there's there's so many things because also you could argue that Sharia is on the back of culture as well. Like for for example, wearing niqab, wearing a niqab covering your face is very much subject whether whether it's mubah or halal or haram or mustahab or wajib or haram whatever is also subject to the culture and where you're living and what environment you're in. Do you get me? It doesn't mm. it doesn't necessarily that the same rule doesn't have to apply uh, like you know for everyone it's not one rule for all and you know I, I think a lot of things islamically is also subject to where you are what age you live in and what culture you're surrounded by so i think yeah. also to add to i think like perhaps some of your grievance on this is like like our parents generation god bless them right pioneers came here didn't speak the language right were treated with hostility and racism right and with barely any money in their own pockets, they put together Hussein Niyaz for us, they put yeah, together yeah. Imam Bargas for us. Bless them. So, like, God bless them. Yeah. Right? I mean. The, arguably, the form of religion that they themselves inherited was heavily culturally skewed. Yes. Right? I.e., the religious principles were missing from it. It wasn't the case that what they were doing is haram, right? It's not like any of our parents said, hey, it's Imam Hussein's wafat, let's do some crazy haram like no one no one said any of that right but yeah it's 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 possible that during that era and don't forget especially with the uh the indo-pak uh, region and and even actually the middle east like we, we've been like colonized right and our all of our principles or values were all kind of estranged Distorted. by the white man right like just mm -hmm. that's just facts right by the british yeah they, they came and they you know classified us oh you're this you're sunni you're shia you're sufi you're this you're this you're that type of Shia, you're that type of Sunni. And like, basically like, they didn't have an issue with us being divided, right? Yeah. It worked for them just for, for the administration, right? But it left us like with just a hollow, scars, yeah, yeah, like a hollow identity basically. Yeah. And we're just left holding on to uh, cultural practices. So anyways, forgive our grandparents and our parents. Uh, they came and many of them, um, and I've experienced this myself too growing up, just focused on the culture and the rituals, right? And like there was no foundation for it so a lot of our generation and i know that a lot of our listeners are going to listen to uh, listen to this and resonate hey, you go through your teenage phase 16 17 18 start questioning right you start listening to majlises other than what your parents have listened to right mm. you start hearing things that don't actually line up with what you've been doing this whole time then you start doubting these rituals and you start doubting the culture and it's like this is all just a cultural practice this is a ritual i don't need it i don't need it I'm going to intellectualize Imam Hussein. I'm going to intellectualize Islam. Okay. And I think that that is a vital process to be fair. I think it needs to happen. Right. I think there's no choice. It's going to happen. Right. Uh, growing up and born in the, in the West have been made to question things. And I think questioning is a very important part. And mm. especially as you come to university, then you really like triple down on that whole, like questioning everything, questioning your identity, everything that your parents did. Yeah. That's part and parcel of it. 
and I did that too, right? I'll sit there, you know, in my era of intellectualizing, you know what I'm saying? Sitting there in the majalis, and I'm like, mm, I bet that didn't happen. Mm. I'll see an alum, I'm like, oh, I'm not going to touch it. That's, there's no reason to touch the alum, right? And I question all these things and being cynical, right? Some people get stuck there, right? Some people get stuck there and think that that's like the way to be, right? Yeah. When you're just cynical, hey, I don't need to cry. I can express my feelings like this. Like, and I'm, I'm, I'm not calling them out. It's, it is what it is, right? But when I had a kid, right? And I'm in this intellectual phase, right? And it's now Muharram. And I've got to tell this two-year-old, three-year-old what Muharram is. Mm. I can't do that without culture. Yeah, yeah, you're right. <laughs> I can't, I can't do it without 100% culture. 100% right. Like, what, what can I say? What is it that we all oh, we remember Imam Hussein? Okay. Imam Hussein was this? He died. Okay. Now, without culture, it'll just become like a story. I, I don't mean exactly, to make it. You're right. Sounds that you can't, you can't, you're right. you can't, you can't, you can't uh, articulate your intell right. intellectualization. As Adari, the reason why me, you, him, him, Everyone, so 22 million people that arrived to Karbala yeah. is we grew up with the culture of Azadari, Ascent. right? The smell of Agarbati, right? Oud, right? The mm. smell oh. of certain foods being cooked, right? Yeah. The feeling of these fabrics, right? The, the colors of the wall, seeing that, seeing our parents wearing black. Five senses. Right? Our parents putting on these bandanas saying, Ya Hussein on our head. That's culture. But that's what brings the whole thing alive to us. Sense. It's it similar, to, it's similar to worship. Yeah. It's like Allah will only be a name, but we have to do more. We have to pray. We have to fast. You know, we've got to dress in a certain way. We've got to do certain acts. We've got to worship in a particular way. Similar to the culture. It's what connects you to Imam Hussein. Yeah. Yeah. These acts connect you to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yeah. I like that. I yeah. like that. I know those, those, are, those are obligations to yeah. Allah, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But Imam Hussein and the Ahl Bayt, they're so vast. And, 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 and this is where like Shizan becomes really interesting compared to I know you're say. like other yeah. other what to call it schools of thought is that we have like these human stories that we can connect yeah. to right and yet like they might dismiss oh you think they're superheroes yeah dude like Abbas is a superhero like the, he's in, like the, you listen to the story he's my superhero the more than yeah. superhero growing up do you get what I mean yeah. right so it's like I now have have like a a, a template of a man that I want to uh, wanna be like an archetype right um, we see for Imam Ali and uh, Hazrat Abbas, Imam Hussain, uh, Imam Hassan, uh, all the Imams, we see this like uh, these stories and, and the challenges mm. they went through and also how they culturally express themselves during certain things. So, uh, you know, having that um, uh, in, in our childhood, I think, like, is what glues the Ahl to our heart. Um, and inshallah, like, I think that we're going to pass this on to, our, uh, on to the next generation. Um, Intellectualizing has its place yeah. in your late teens, twenties, right? But I yeah, advise right. any brothers and sisters listening to it, like try it as soon as you can, just get out of it because you you just become cynical in life. And, and bro, to be honest, it, in some ways it might harden the heart. And like you said, we all went through that process and that the doubting phase, or or like I think the word intele intellectualizing is probably the perfect word for it because you're trying to find rationale behind everything and, and and there is a rationale there is a rationale there is a rationale 100 percent. but but sometimes you know there's different ways to reach the top of the mountain and when you especially when you talk about parenthood like for me i'm at a stage where my son alhamdulillah he's like approaching two years old and now he's he's just had his first maharam and he's the first proper maharam where he's like getting the vibes so here's Matam, he knows I've got to hit my chest and he's you know he sees the black flag push it say yeah Hussein for example and in my mind it's like the symbolism for a young child is very important because they will identify religion by sound, touch, smell, taste, all of that stuff. They will, they will like, and it's important to a degree, but they'll categorize certain uh, sensations with certain emotions. Mm. Do you get me? Mm. And like, that's super important. And you don't, you don't really realize it until you become a parent. And I'm very early in that process with my two kids. Um, but it's, it's true. Are there any, you know, us all being parents now, yeah. are there any cultures that we can say our parents or our grandparents had that came to us that we wouldn't pass down to our that children? That we wouldn't. Wouldn't or would? Yeah, wouldn't. Uh-huh. That's a sticky one. Shall I go first? Yeah. Go on. So, my dad, I love you, dad, right? He he made me walk underneath the horse's legs. Uh -huh. So, like, Zuljana one. in Pakistan, in the Pakistani culture, we decorate an actual white horse okay. as Zuljana, right? Um, and, and to be honest with you, that's a powerful sight, right? Especially when it's decorated really well. 
it it really brings the story home, right? Of Imam Hussein, uh, the Zuljan uh, arriving without the rider, right? Like it's a big part of like the um, story that we tell each other in in, in Muharram. Uh, but like there was this thing where he said go through Zuljana's legs like literally like go <laughs> and make dua right mm. and whatever dua you make will get answered right now obviously this horse in tooting was a bit of a you know it was, it was a bit volatile it was a bit dangerous so luckily I didn't get kicked in the head yeah. right? but yeah, it could have happened right so obviously I'm not, gonna, I'm not gonna pass that down to my kid right but like for example showing reverence to alams and decoration and any sort of like sign of Azadari right I'll do. You will. Yeah. It's a horse. Look at it. Think and reflect about the, the tragedy of Mama Saint for sure. Do I need to go and actually touch it? Probably not. Can I go and touch it and stroke it and imagine I'm stroking Zuljana? Probably yes. But then when you start merging it like or conflating it with an actual religious principle like uh, Dua, as in the means right? of Shifa or Wasila, yeah, then, 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 it, then, it, bit, then it gets yeah, a bit sticky. What I mean. Because what I mean? then what you, you might assign a theological principle to like a cultural practice exactly because then that's that's there's an overlapping which may yeah. should may not be yeah. the right thing to take yeah. place that's a yeah. good one to be honest i think it's is different because obviously as like as a culture our, our culture inherently is western do you see what i mean so a lot of our cultural practices are are i don't want to say it like this but are watered down pakistani indian practices mm. do you know what i mean so the zuljana thing we see it but we don't do it or like we don't really have it in our centers growing up mm. um but the more the more like i don't want to say in a in a rude way but the the, the less extravagant or the less like loud ones so the alams as example mm. versus the zuljana alams and stuff we will but generally speaking alhamdulillah i think for me i don't have that many or i haven't come across any so far that i wouldn't pass on but in terms of things i would pass on bro there's several man mm. um and like i said earlier like the behavioral stuff culture is very important um and in our culture we do a lot of things like kunde niyaz stuff like that proper cultural yeah but it's amazing and you have like um the 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 jewelers and like basically the, the you have like a metal swing for Hazrat Ali Azhar. and like the whole idea is is that these things bring you back to Karbala if yeah. we're talking about Karbala yeah, yeah, yeah. you know and those things are are very important I think mm. symbolically to take mm. you towards uh the Ayim Ali Muslim and ultimately to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so yeah, it's a very important one. I want to kind of take the conversation a bit further. Okay. All right. I wanted to hear Ali's, Ali's. Yeah, go on. Uh, this is because we've been talking a lot about our culture. Okay. I, 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 like you mentioned the Zuljanah, you mentioned the Alams as an example. I don't have one specific Azadari mm. to say I wouldn't pass down, but one mindset I wouldn't pass down or allow it to reach my children, inshallah, my children's children. Is the mindset of disrespecting other people's culture mm, or disrespecting right. or belittling you know other people's practices or what connects them to imam hussein for example those sort of things no we need to learn respect value unite and understand one another yeah because sure. ultimately it's cultural practice it's not islam completely there are methods and ways to take you towards allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and closer to imam hussein but you don't have to do it yeah you don't have to agree with it you can have a whole different opinion you yeah. don't need bro you do not need to agree yeah it's not going to take you to hellfire and inshallah i will take you to jannah that's yeah. that's the mindset that we need and i think marrying outside your culture opens your mind up to these things you look at i say that bro. with passion by the way yeah because passion I, came across I, when i when i grew up i the friends i have now if i were friends with them when i was young allahu akbar Mm. I'm being very honest. Really? Yeah. And I only understood that they are like me once I got to mix with them. Mm. We all thought, you know, you think different, Baba, you're going to hell. Baba, don't go to this guy's center. Or, you know, don't go to Latum and that, and that Husseinia. Like these sort of things. I was like, what you? now I'm like, what are you talking about? Yeah, yeah, yeah. These are all lovers of Imam Hussein. Mm -hmm. These are all Shia of Ali ibn Abi Talib. Mm -hmm. I think we're recognizing where we are. Like if you zoom out on a timeline, Right and see where we are as a people that have gone through various stages of oppression and power, so on and so forth. Where we are, where we are right now, geopolitically speaking, in terms of power, also culturally, is is phenomenal. Right, we've got majalis running in every single language around the world. Right, we've got young guys uh, picking up the mantle of carrying on the tradition of Latmiya in again different languages, different styles, so on and so forth. And we've given born to this like this this pilgrimage that we call it now, right? Where we go and we like walk towards Imam Hussein. The journey of right? love. And I was you know like last Muharram, I remember just sitting there and I'm like, 
uh, in fact, this Muharram, I said to my, uh, said to my daughter, I said, Amira, you realize like what we do as Husseinis, no one in the world does. We gather with excitement and anticipation to mourn and cry and to beat our chest. Wow. Right? Like that's, no, nothing in the world does that. Like that's insane. Like, what do you mean that's what you do? And we do it. We were so happy to do it. And we feel so good when we're able to cry so much. Right? Mm. Like no other culture in the world allows this. No other, yeah. like, no other faith allows this. And so I honestly, like, I, I get kind of annoyed when I hear this like pessimistic kind of outlook on our community. Like, oh, this is not working. We're not doing this. We're not united. Blah, blah. I'm like, brother, this is all, it's all going to plan. We're, we're fine. Do you get what I mean? Like, mm. we're good, right? Like, we don't need to have this like pessimistic view that like, oh, all our community is going to hell. And uh, yes, there's ignorance. Yes, there's areas of, that can be improved. But they're improving. But the problem is, is that we're impatient. We want this all to happen right now. Mm. But again, zoom out on the timeline of the yeah, history yeah. Of, of lovers of the Ahlul Bayt. Look where we are right now. Like, we should be so proud of ourselves. 10 years ago, they came for us, right? They came for us in our country. They came for us in Syria. They came for us in Iraq, right? We ate them up. Yeah. Right? I'm going to say that straight. We, you know, cleared, mm. cleared them nicely, right? And now even they're looking at it like, okay, we can't try that tactic with them, mm. right? We can't try that. We can't break them culturally, right? We can't break them politically, right? We can't break them with military. We're good. Alhamdulillah. We've got this love of Hussein and the love of Hussein is, is enough. It's, it's unbreakable, it's enough. indestructible. It's, like you said, zooming out on the timeline, like there's been somewhat of a standstill when it comes to uh, migration for hundreds of years, if not thousands, until this like globalized era we've lived in, in the last hundred odd years, or even in the last 50 odd years, and we're, we're talking about the migration from the east to the west, mm. specifically speaking, and just not just the migration geographically, but also, like you're saying, the cultural revolution, the information age we live in now. Like you talked about our grandparents and um, like their, their, their adherence to cultural practices. Mm. The difference is for us, and you said like they were heavily impacted by their cultural practices. I think we are too. It's yeah. just our cultural practices are different. Western Shia yeah, or different. British Shia. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah. the difference is, is we, because we have such British access Shia. to information, yeah, mm -hmm. we have access to information. So kind of like, we're also searching at the same rate that we're we're practicing. Do you get what I mean? Yeah. Whereas for, for example, 200 years ago in Lucknow or somewhere random in India, for example, the access, the information drip down mm. would be a result of scholars coming from different parts of the world, Hausa to visit, you know, the subcontinent and then sharing information that they heard from their teachers, you know, when they left their Hausa three months ago by foot. Do you know what I mean? Now it's so much more rapid exactly. and the, the, the search for information is so much exactly. more clear. And exactly. that's why you've got like the cynicism that you're mentioning. Yeah. It's because people are finding out information quicker, maybe prematurely mm. and maybe too much information too fast and um, not in the right state of mind to consume that information and mm. then getting caught in the trap of, of that cynicism or pessimism that you yeah. mentioned. Yeah. Um, and quickly on the culture thing, the Ayyam salam set the standard by marrying outside of their culture. Mm. And you talk about Amir al-Mu'mineen alayhi salam up until the Imam of our time, Ajulullah ta'ala Fajr sharif and the cultural uh, like uh, fluidity that they had whether it's like ethnically or geographically, where they're based, who they married, how they practiced, who they were, who their companions were. Like, you know, I was hearing a lecture yesterday um, about some of the companions of Imam Sajjad al-Islam who were from Kabul. And then you hear about other companions who are from Africa, other companions who are from India. Mm -hmm. SubhanAllah, like that was back then. And the Imam set the standard by, yeah. by opening the borders up, basically, and not even allowing there to be a border in place yeah. under the Ummah. So... I want to kind of like move the conversation forward into narrative mm. and nuance because I know this is something you feel passionately about. Mm. Um, how do you feel we sit at the moment when it comes to the level of conversation we have in our communities, both in inner circles and in majalis, generally speaking? Because we're a community that's, we talk a lot, we sit around a table like this and we talk between ourselves. But generally speaking, our level of conversation may or may not be, you could argue, led by a handful of scholars or maraja or whatever, you, you know, whichever kind of category you want to put people in. But do they kind of set the precedent and are we following that culture? Do you see what I mean? I, I kind of get what you mean. Um, and and obviously, like, I want to say that our marj, maraja are doing a great job and that system is, is holding well yep. for now, right? Um, 
I'm not of the mindset that says we should not question how it's conducted and how the whole operation works. I, I do feel like we have a right to, for people to ask questions, right? Uh, for people to even suggest alternative ways of practicing uh, the concept of taklid, right? That, that's just like cards on the table, yeah, right? Yeah. Okay. Um, but basically, like, I think, I think what's disheartening is that whatever system is that we do have right now is not as effective as it could be in terms of sharing the wisdom and knowledge of the Ahlul Bayt and the 12 Imams to, to a mainstream discourse. Okay. Right? Now, you could argue that even, even if we were able to, they would not allow us to share our views, right? And, and honestly, those conspiracies a lot of times are true. They do silence certain people because they just don't want that angle to come out, right? Um, but a big part of it is really down to like us just basically, we're just talking to ourselves all the time, like preaching to the choir, you know? Like how many times have you gone to a majlis and, and, and it's basically just fazail of the Hilbayt, right? Which obviously is amazing, right? But it's like, You've already heard that. Bro, I'm going to disagree with you strongly on that, man. Go ahead. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I, I, I feel that we are where we are because of the constant in-your-face repetition of Fadha'il and Masaib for thousands of years. You know, this Muharram, I went to a majlis and it was um, one of the early nights and it was Masaib of Hazrat Muslim and Islam. I had a friend with me who doesn't, who's a Shia. He's, you know, he's a grown man does not know the Masaib of Hazrat Muslim. He came with me to the Majlis and the scholar on the Mimbar started the uh, Masaib and he said, oh, we all know the story. Imam Hussain said Muslim to, Karbala, uh, to Kufa and you know the rest of the story. And then he was thrown off the building. Salaam Allahi Alayha. Salaam Allahi Alayha. And I was thinking like, bro, you can't skip out the whole Masaib yeah. because the repetition of Fadha and the Masaib is so critical to keeping the message alive. Like just how we continuously for generations will name our kids the same names for thousands of years because I, like, I don't know, I don't want to go on a ramble, but basically I feel like, I know what you mean, but uh, and you might feel like it's a bit stagnant, maybe. Uh, it's, okay, so maybe I phrased it incorrectly. Like, yeah. just to be clear, I'm not against Fadha and the Masaib. Just put down the record. You yeah, mean that's... not just focus on that and solely? Not even that, not even that. I should have phrased it better where I mean, it's like done from a de defensive position. Right. Okay. Right. We're right. They're wrong. All right. Or Who's there? They. Okay. Right. Referring to our brothers in Ahl Sunnah. Okay. Right. And it's this constant kind of like, you can almost call it like an inferiority complex, right. Of saying, look, look, look at, all, look at what the Ahl did. Right. Why don't they believe in them? Right. Or it's like, it's just kind of like comparison with the other, right? Rather than focusing on just, just presenting Do your the facts, thing. right? Yeah. So like, I'm a big believer in just nuance, right? And balance, right? It's not helpful when you're always trying to pitch your crowd into a certain mindset, like your mindset, i.e. the person on the pulpit is trying to get them to think what they're saying is the correct way and the only way. Yeah. And any other view is just like, should just be like, it's not even like, disregarded it's like they mock it right you've se you've seen that we mock other viewpoints right so even we do this amongst shias ourselves right when there's someone who believes in theory x right they will go on the member and say theory x is correct and anyone that believes in theory y we have to question if they're sincere about their love for that debate right if we, you've you've heard these things yeah. right and it's like at, at some point that's not really helpful because it's confusing. Well, it's confusing because now, for example, let's say you're, you're someone who's sat in that lecture mm. and you're dabbling with the other idea, right? Okay. And now this person comes and presents it and just shuts it down. That's going to get your conspiracy brain kicking in when you're a young, you're, you're a young person thinking, oh, they are right. I saw a YouTube channel said they're trying to silence this viewpoint. Then you go down that rabbit hole even further, right? We don't embrace like the differences. Just, just simply state, like you've got to make a point, right? Just simply acknowledge the other perspectives that exist on it. Like that, the, you know, when it, yeah. when, it come, when it comes to like, I think I, th I will call them sensitive matters. Yeah. Because some people can adhere to them. Some people can are far away from them. Yeah. But I think what is nice, I think if, if our speakers, our lecturers and, you know, our ulama and scholars on the pulpit, when they want to give a viewpoint, mm. they shouldn't just give their own viewpoint. Yeah. They should give both viewpoints and then share their opinion. That's it. That's it. 
Unless you're the marja, for example. It's not. Unless you're the... But Ali, this is what I'm saying. It's not hard, mm. right? But for some reason, they've made it really difficult. And then when we inherit this knowledge from them, yeah. right? Depending on, you know, our age, right? Our, our hormones will kick up when we start having fights on social media. Mm. Actually, by the khlaki, it will polarize. Right? Because all we've been given is points to beat the other, other lot with. After right? the majlis. After the majlis, right? After maghrib. After maghrib. <laughs> Uh, right. I think you have to context is important because otherwise you will polarize and we'll become an ignorant population. Exactly. We will become knowingly ignorant once we know that there are other opinions, but we don't a uh, research. Or should into them. we respect every opinion? It's not about respect. No, it's like knowledge. It's like knowledge. That oh, okay. It's acknowledging. Yeah. Is, is yeah. One no one's saying respect. I don't. I don't believe in okay. respecting other opinions. That doesn't make no, sense. No, bro. It's it's. I respect your right to have an ah, opinion. I respect yeah. your right. To so, have, for example, oh. if someone does not believe in the burning of the door of Sayyidina Fatima Zahra. Uh, then I might not respect that opinion, but I respect their right to come to a conclusion, because we but we bask in the glory of information sharing now, and we only are able to have dialogue at this day and age because for thousands of years we've been a madhab which encourages discussion and dialogue and you know conversation, and and that's so critical to where we are because we are we pride ourselves on being the school of thought which which is which is filled with knowledge and uh, academia and we come from a school of wukala and the whole institution of of scholars and whatnot like that's so deep rooted in our culture like islamically for for several hundred years mm. like that that's got to remain like and the minute we drift away from that there's a problem there and you'll either polarize or you'll become you'll become so extremist that you'll turn to like ignorant people online themselves who will basically uh, exploit that desire and pursuit of knowledge, but also know that people are gullible, like these YouTube da'wah guys, basically, who will exploit young, vulnerable Muslim men and basically say, this is a hard, these, forget even hardline, these are opinions that you have to consume, anything other than this is outside the folds of Islam. Like, and that's how, that's why we have such a, a polarized audience because like you said for, for a long time we've we've like had this desire to learn more you go through that asking age that information seeking age and then if you're exposed to the wrong information which is very easily palatable in this day and age, especially tiktok and that mm. then you come out of it it's very hard to basically come out of, out of it unscathed so i remember this is picking up actually on on the the tragedy of Bibi fatima right because that's so contentious right it's so like sensitive yeah. and delicate to approach it right especially if you're trying to like be sensitive of ahl sunnah's like revered leaders right okay uh but i had a goal like i think last year or two years ago on the muslim vibe right and basically create this person i was like okay i'm gonna try and do this from a nuanced perspective right and all i did was simply state that shias believe this sunnis believe this some Sunnis believe this, some Shias believe that, right? It's, it's a very simple approach to like, this is what Shias believe, right? And because of that, uh, so firstly, that's what Shias believe, this is what Sunnis believe. But because of what Shias believe, they then do Latin on the first three Caliphs as a result of that thing happening, okay. right? Sunnis disagree with that because they revere them, right? There you go. It's a nice, nice and answered for everyone. How you want to take it, you take it. Take it, take it. You've like, shared. So like, both sides of so the So the thing is, is that, look, you want to appeal to even the lowest common denominator, right? So a Salafi can read that, right? And it, there's not, they can't refute it. Yeah. Do you get what I mean? No, because you, it's so just fact-sharing. Like, if, you, if you simply speak in a nuanced and balanced way, you're irrefutable because you're not, like, you're not making a point. You're just simply stating what it is, right? Yeah, yeah. So if I say, for example, like, you know, the, the, the concept of Wahid al-Wajud. Yeah. My belief in Wahid is this. Some people believe this. Some people believe that. And some people believe this. Now, if you got that from the member, yeah. that's much more wholesome, right? Because now you're not left like with this weird confusion where it's like, oh, actually, I spoke to another scholar and he said that. So is that scholar a monophic? Is that scholar like some hypocrite? What's going on, right? It just makes it like a lot more like just it's just chill. You know what I mean? Just, like, yeah, yeah. just to stop trying to pitch people. Just just say what needs to be said. So I think there's a responsibility Period. that falls on the ones who are sharing that information, whether it's like content creators on Instagram, yeah. media organizations, and scholars. But also equally the responsibility on us to understand how to consume. Yeah, like we can consume information, but like understanding nuance is a big part of it yeah. so when you hear information filtering that information through through like a process you have internally and knowing that 
this will either come from a place like of of like bias or allegiance mm. or whatever it might be and then maybe searching for an alternative not for the sake of refutation and that takes time though it does and it's not and like skill. a quick process yeah, it, it's not and it's not really a process we learn at yeah. a young age yeah. and obviously we we are born and raised in an education system in the, in the uk which is abc happened and basically this is our opinion of it secular opinion of it for example world war ii this is what you're taught xyz you know what i mean for example yeah, yeah. so like that process of digesting information in a new way is not mm. really taught to us do you get me yeah I get so it's, it's something yeah, which yeah. we've got to discover on our own journey no, we have to raise our standards as well like it actually reminds me of like something quite absurd someone some this some, some absurd thing someone said to me they're like the jaffrey school is and should be elitist mm. right and i'm like hold on mate that sounds a <laughs> bit much right but basically what he was saying was was like even back in the day like to be one of imam jaffer's sadiq students you couldn't just like waltz into his classroom right there was certain character checks for example like you know like they were their mom wanted to know like are you seriously ready for what i'm about to drop Chill. on you right mm. you gotta be of a certain caliber right and in the same way, like our majalis now should raise the standard, yeah. right? Where yeah, maybe the bottom twenty percent might struggle to kind of like uh, keep up with it, but then that's a good pressure to have. Yeah, I agree. Right, that, that's yeah. a good pressure to like, okay, that. I should aspire to know what. what but there are for. times, sorry, bro. I know I'm interrupting you a lot. There are times where it's not the bottom twenty percent. It's either the bottom eighty percent mm. or it's the bottom two percent. Mm. do you know what i mean well either you're talking about something so advanced uh, well above like you might talk about a concept which is studied in hausa and you literally start to study after year to seven or 14 yeah and, about kharij and you're bringing these ideas to laymen or like roadmen yeah, 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 like, yeah. in the uk yeah. and like it's a bit baffling to yeah, most people yeah. but when a lot of people in this day and age will struggle to pray salah and struggle to yeah, make yeah. 30 some fast. of the basic stuff no i agree do you get what i'm saying yeah. But at the same time, like, it is important to pull up. I was talking more about the quality of talking, the quality, right? Not the yeah. subject. Because subject, I don't believe that member should be going so advanced, right? Like, right, okay. Because obviously, if you've got, like, a mixed audience, it, that's not fair, right? That's just not right to do that, yeah? And even I think we've got, like, hadiths from the imams that say something to the effect of, uh, don't speak to people of that which they're not ready to comprehend, mm -hmm. right? Like, that's not fair. I mean, that's, it's not a right thing to do, right? Um, so... But I'm thinking, I'm talking more about the quality of how we are presenting ourselves, right? I see. And the quality, for example, trusting your audience to tell them, hey, by the way, Sunnis disagree and their opinion is this, right? Or actually, there are some marja that allow this thing that I've just said is very bad, right? But there are actually some marja that allow it, right? Or like, hey, by the way, the, the you know, authenticity of this thing is not like 100%, just so you know, right? Like we should be doing that. Okay. Right, like as in, for example, um, and, I, and I don't want to like compare ourselves to like uh, like our, our Sunni brothers too much, but like in a lot of their lectures, they will reference the Quran verse that they're talking about, and they will reference the hadith that they're talking about whilst they're saying it. Right, we just drop hadith, yeah, yeah. and the audience is expected to just like accept right. it. Right, yeah. whereas we do not have even the same criteria of authentic, like authenticating certain hadith verbally. Right, yeah. So at least give your audience something that they can go and follow up with, right? Like, I feel like, for example, it should be a standard Western practice. Maybe we can introduce it as part of the culture. Is that after a majlis, there's handouts, right? Or like some sort of screen or something like this that we can set up with references, references. from the lecture. Do you get yes, what I mean? Yeah, right? I like that. Um, so like you're empowering your the audience rather than just treating them as like, hey, listen to what I'm saying. Now walk out and believe what I said, right? We should, like, there should be uh, that process of, okay, now go digest this information, go research about it. Learn about the different perspectives. See where you arrive, mm. right? If it's the truth, yeah, if it's the truth that we have as Shias, right, and we believe that, and that Imam Jafar Sadiq's uh, wisdom and teachings of his school of thought is is pristine, then we should have absolutely no issue talking about ulterior viewpoints. Yeah. We should not. Should like, be it, shy of anything. It's illogical to say like we should. Should be comfortable. Should be more than comfortable. Like, yeah, this is what Buddhists do. Or this is what Sikhs do. And, and, and I like the point like, where you said, for example, we should share what our brothers, Ahlul Sunnah wal Jama'ah, what their opinion is, for mm. example, when it comes to, you know, a belief we have, for example. Because that's nice. That can affirm your belief even greater. Yeah. You can find it there, yeah. for example. Yeah. So it's nice. And, yeah. and you, I just want to mention one thing. Sometimes we hear a hadith and we're like, you know, where did we hear this? Where are we going to find this? Yeah. Sometimes we even have some scholars, may Allah bless them. They say, oh, this hadith is weak. Yeah. 
when they say the hadith is weak, you're thinking, okay, the, this, this hadith means there's nonsense. Yeah, yeah. Bro, it just doesn't mean there's enough. Yeah, um, yeah. You know, uh, it's not mutawatir. How do I translate mutawatir in English? It's a bit... Uh, like, a, a baffle, like, like, what's the word? You're not going to find the hundred hadith saying it. Yeah, Maybe yeah, you're going to find only three. It doesn't verified. have a blue check next to it. Yeah, basically. It doesn't have the <laughs> Elon Musk. It's not verified. Yeah, 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 yeah. On the X platform. But it doesn't mean it doesn't exist. Yeah, yeah exactly. Right. Yeah. And, yeah. And, and sometimes when, when, when we enter this world, this is why it's important. Like you said, they should share after the lecture. But sometimes we, we can hear, okay, this is not weak. This is weak, a weak hadith, for example. Mm. Or we only find this in a kafi, but we don't find it in Bihar. Or mm -hmm. That confuses you. You understand, but once yeah, you have these yeah, references yeah. with you, but then once it's normalized, right? Yes. yes once yes, this yes, kind yes, of once yes. this once it's normalized, that Molana will say, okay, this is actually a week. This is uh, legit. This is this, and maybe even elaborate from time to time as to what he means when he says week, right? Like if we understand our how our religion, because right now what's happening, yeah, is our kids are going on Twitter, right? After listening to a couple of lectures, going out for a fight. Yeah, and getting ripped apart. I mean, you've yeah, seen yeah, it on, yeah, on yeah, Twitter. It's, yeah. it's, the situation, like, it's not like back in the day, the Shia chat day is a standard mm. kind of like uh, back and forth, right? Now it's advanced. These guys have studied our books now, right? So these, these young salafis, you've no, seen no, it, right? No, you know no, what I'm no, talking no, about? Yeah, yeah. These guys, they've gone, they've gone and studied our books, right? They're ripping apart our Rijal and all this stuff like that. And that's okay, right? Because our method of understanding is different to their method, right? But if we're not told that, Right, and we haphazardly engage in debates. We're gonna look silly. No, you need to be equipped right? with the knowledge on how to. Do you but, get what but I mean? Even but if, it takes honesty to go equipped properly. It does, and it takes it takes like humility as well because you've got to bring yourself down to a point where you're like, maybe I need to know more, or maybe I don't know enough, or maybe my viewpoint is not the correct, or maybe something I believed in for years may not be like the strongest in terms of yeah. uh, authenticity and whatnot. But I don't want to get too waylaid on that because I yeah. think like ultimately the point you're making, if if I'm understanding correctly, mm. is that there does need to be more nuance in discussing religion and more honesty and more sincerity and maybe less like more respect more respect more more like cohesion of of uh, and unity of like uh, they just give knowledge. maximum knowledge isn't it? if you're yeah, giving maximum 100%. knowledge you're giving all the perspectives to give i mean that's and, maximum and that, knowledge. and that ultimately will advance our western shia culture because we're like in such a unique position now where we're trying to find our feet and our ground like if you talk about the last 10 years and how much we've advanced prior to the 10 years prior and then the coming 10 years 2033 what's going to be happening and what will we say about 2023 like what was happening now which 10 years from now can be like yeah it started then do you know what i mean mm -hmm. like because 10 years ago 15 years ago there were groundbreaking movements which which you talked about across you know the stuff you guys were involved in and others as well but what are we going to do now like whether you're listening in australia or in europe or in the north america wherever um, what can we do what can you do at home which can be uh <coughs> Like, uh, hopefully, inshallah, inspiring. So drop comments below if you guys got ideas, you guys got suggestions, how we can move forward. Um, last kind of question before, because I know we've yeah. been talking. Uh, what's your ambition? So what 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 legacy do you want to leave behind? In, oh, that's a heavy question. It is a heavy question. The Rizvi legacy. What, where, what, what do you want Hasib Rizvi to be remembered as? Okay, we're not going to talk about me in some abstract third person. The reborn term, intro. Right? Yeah. Virtual but, reality. No, but gen genuinely, like, actually, it's, it's interesting you mentioned that because, like, I have been giving this a lot of thought, right? Um, especially these last two years, like, having an existential crisis in California, just, like, yeah. sitting there on the beach and be like, oh, my God, where am I kind of thing? What, what am I doing with life? Um, honestly, and I, I, inshallah, like, you know, this doesn't come across in, in any strange way, but, like, my, my goal really and i'm gonna get emotional really is just to be like the best dad i can be um, i get emotional when i think about my daughter um now that's that's really it. like you know before there was this whole thing of like change, a legacy change right? like world. oh yeah i'm gonna do that i'm gonna do that but bro just like when you have you you've got kids you know what i'm talking about bro like if you can make that kid a decent human being mate you're fine Forget your else. Best. you know what i mean um but on a more like creative level um i i just kind of want to keep pushing the boundaries of um like our culture like advancing it uh developing it nurturing talent nurturing uh younger generation creative talent um i do feel like there might have been a slowdown in the last like 10 years like i haven't seen anything new pop up i haven't seen anything like push the the paper uh, so to speak um so i'm keen to see like you know over the next 10 years 10 years 15 years if we can develop some system where like younger people can really rise up um and, and express like their religious and shia identity in a way that's like new right 
um, and somehow break away from like the algorithmic like sludge that we have today. Mm. Ahsan, Said. The uh, intros for Said Ali. No, no. <laughs> I, I, I'm not good with intros. Well, I'm not good with outros either, but I'm going to say, you know, God bless you. And inshallah, Allah protects your daughter for you. I mean, Amen. Yeah, it's, it's very rare for someone to say, like, I, I, I don't want to leave a legacy. I just want to show I'm the best father. Yeah, I, I hardly hear that. No, she's in good and hands. It, and, and, it, and it shows the man you are. And inshallah, you live through that. And inshallah, your daughter does see that off you. Inshallah. But one thing I want to finish off with, is I want to say, you know, we spoke about scholars and, you know, sometimes how, how they are on the pulpit, off the pulpit, whatever it is. Just, if you're listening to this podcast, and I'm sure we might, we might have a speaker or two. Yeah. Share with us your opinion. Yeah. I'll be, because you've heard our side, you've heard Hasib's side, you've heard my co-host like, Ahmed's side. We want to hear your side. Mm. Yeah. Because it's, it's, we can speak as much as we want. But what's the point if no one's listening? Like if we're talking about the scholars and lecturers, may Allah protect them and allow them to continue in the service I mean, that yeah, they do. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. It's, it, it's not going to get anywhere if we're just going to talk and say, you know, yeah, we no. think you should do this. Maybe, you know, add this to your lecture or share a reference here. Let us know how we can benefit from each other. Rem- yeah. Remember when Sheikh Salim used to comment on our podcast every I week? I used to love that because that's someone who we look up to yeah. no, who's yeah, contributing with the conversation. I mean, we, there's, alhamdulillah, yeah. like we're lucky because we've, I think like one thing we've tried to create in like generally in Ahlul Bay TV, you guys know better than I do, 100%. But more so with a podcast is to create an environment or a platform where you can have varying ideological opinions. Yeah. Like if you look at our, alhamdulillah, we've done 60 plus episodes now. Killing the it. spectrum ideologically of guests the amount of times is I've so myself. varying. <laughs> I'm joking. Yeah, sorry, say? <laughs> what did you say? I was, I was saying the amount of times I've held myself. Yeah, only say much that one Yeah, no, I know. <laughs> but like, as in, from if you want to call it left or right or whatever, but yeah. like, I think it's important because you are able to share a platform with people who you typically would not see speak on the same platform or on the same member in many cases, yeah, yeah. but have been able to come to a more casual environment. Well, I truly believe this talk. is the akhlaq of the Ahlul Bayt because I know, like, Rasulullah will even sit with, with someone who disagrees with him, mm, yeah, someone yeah. who will throw Fact. the trash on him. Yeah, you know, yeah, we hear stories. Yeah, yeah. The Prophet, people used to throw rocks and stones. That's and, the thing, isn't it? He it's was like, still chat got, with them and so become young. comfortable. Like, you that, know, when you know say mean? culture, by the way, apparently, yeah. st- uh, rumor has it that that story stems from culture. It doesn't actually exist. What are you talking about? Oof. Now, we'll fact check We'll fact check. check this for the podcast. You need a fact check. Yeah. So that's on you to fact check because I don't know where to begin. Safe. All right, that, Hasib, thank you so much. I appreciate bro. it, man. I appreciate love, the time. It's been great. We, not at all, man. We love, we love you. We love the work you do. Um, you, you are like a, a one in a million talent, and you know that. Stuff, and and bro, may Allah give you more, more power to your arm and more, inshallah, more energy and drive to continue. Um, and may Allah protect you and your family, bro. Always appreciate it. Man. Come back, bro. No, no, California is where it's going to be at. Yeah. Inshallah, like the plan is to like, develop the community out there, you know? Inshallah, um, inshallah. The way you said but come back, it sounded like he left religion and you asked him to come back. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> Imam Hussein needs him there, inshallah. Yeah, inshallah, inshallah. 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 All right, bro, thank you once again. Sayyidna, thank you as always. And everyone at home, thank you for tuning in. Um, great to, to have you if you're still here. God bless you. I'm sure you must be like brain fried right now. <laughs> but... Um, no yeah, thank chicken. you for tuning in till this <laughs> late and yet yeah, leave us a comment leave your suggestions um and yeah we'll be back as always next week take care have a great week unless it's Assalamu the last alaykum. episode of the season no it's not is it no more we've yeah. got one or two inshallah <laughs> yeah, we've got more got a couple more take care guys we'll see you next week assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh